today we are doing the field test for the Peerless watercolors that we recently unboxed and swatched and applied. Um, and I am not super sure whether or not this card here will be easier or harder uh, than using the booklet, but we'll find out together, right? Okay, so for this, I've already drawn a cute little sketch on some Fabriano watercolor paper. I inked it with Sailor Mitsuo Ida and Sakura of America waterproof pens. And I have attached it to a hard surface to help uh, give it a little bit of support. And I'm gonna be using water brushes in this. I thought it might make it easier. It might help prevent me from feeling the temptation to overwork the piece. Now these are dye-based watercolors, so I have a feeling that's going to play a role in how I handle these. And I am working on a Ranger Ink Essentials craft mat. So hopefully I can use this to mix some of my colors. Now I am going to start, this is gonna be a very simple watercolor illustration since I've never really used these. We'll be learning together. And one of my water brushes would prefer to drip than to work, which is always awesome. So it may not be the water brush for me. So, and then just make sure everything is clean, even if it's a little stained. And we're gonna start, I believe, with, with uh, deep blue. So I'm gonna pick some of that up, apply it with plenty of water to my craft mat, and attempt to do a wash using a Recollections water brush on my watercolor paper. And I've noticed already, I don't know if you guys can tell, that where I let some of my watercolor sit while I filled in other areas, it's already sort of left a darker stain on the paper. Now I find water brushes to be somewhat frustrating and difficult to use compared to brushes, so I do hope you guys will bear with me there will probably be control issues, which are unfortunate, but that's part of life. I have a feeling I'm gonna have blending issues too. So I'm gonna do my best to get nice, even blends. Try to take as many precautions as I can and try to utilize as many tips and tricks that I've got up my sleeve to help ensure that we get nice blends, but there may be a level of this that's just out of my control. This is already sort of modeled. So what I think I'm gonna do is just roll with it and add some additional blue in some areas, help push some of that modeling. Because with art, one of the best things to do about an accident or something you can't control is to try and make it look intentional. Now I'm gonna grab some of that dark blue. Oh, that's a little too, a little too saturated. And work some of that really saturated dark, dark blue in to our modeled areas. And we're gonna clean out our brush and clean up our craft mat. And that way it's not gonna blend into any other color. And we're gonna give this a chance to dry. I'll zoom in on it for you guys so you guys can see what I did. All right, so that has had a chance to dry. I'm actually gonna grab just a little bitty bit. Just a smidge, and we're gonna do the tops of our eyes. We're just gonna do that right now while we've kinda got it going. And next, we're going to work with flesh color or flesh tint. So I'm gonna grab a fairly dark shade, mix it with some water, 
And we're gonna start down on the lower parts of her arms while we wait for her eyes to dry. Oh, sorry about the angle from earlier. Now what I'm doing is I'm sort of leaving a lot of white and then I'm gonna use a clean brush and try to blend out. I'm actually using a different technique than I normally would. It's nice to try new things, nice to be able to experiment and it does seem like I am able to blend out. I wanna be careful because I don't want that to cause too much of a bloom. If you put too much water down, that can happen got a little bit of darker color in and let some of that water absorb. All right, that's had a chance to dry. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of geranium pink. Oh, it's almost a flesh color, at least on my mat. I'll have to see how that turns out. On her cheeks, that might be a little intense. We'll just blend that out a little bit. And that's not as bad as I'd worried it was gonna be. And we'll do her lip and under her nose and above her eyes. And along the underside of her jaw like that. And that is super hot. And I don't mean that in a good way. Like that is a very, very, very intense pink. Hopefully, actually, let's, let's try to dab some of that out. We were able to pick some of it up, but it's still very intense. So I will just have to give it a chance to dry and then maybe we can knock it down a little bit with more flesh tint. Even my camera isn't doing a good job capturing it. All right, so we're still dealing with a hot pink mess. Let's see what we can do about that. I guess I should have gone with Japonica Scarlet instead of Geranium Pink. Even my swatch isn't as hot as this is though. Let's try picking up some really saturated flesh tint. And I am not really super familiar with you. This kind of reminds me of using like liquid watercolors since we're using dye-based watercolors. And although I use them sometimes, I am not nearly as skilled as some people are. So I will do my best, but I feel like this is like using um, an even more challenging liquid watercolor. guess it would be perfect if you were doing like an early 2000s, late 90s Jose manga cover. Any definition that I'd build up just got lost. All right, so that is not really the color I wanted. We're gonna move on. We're gonna pick up some mahogany brown. Why not? And you guys really have to be careful with that flesh tint. Now, in pretty much all of our other field test videos, I have mixed my own skin tones because I like mixing my own skin tones and I like that's one of the things that I test for is can I mix what I would normally want to mix. Uh, but since it came with a flesh tint and since these are such intense and somewhat strange to me colors, I thought using their pre-mixed flesh tint would be the better option. And it gives me an opportunity. Hmm. Sorry, it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate it for you guys since if you're interested in this set, you might be interested in using flesh tint as is. And you guys wouldn't believe how hard it is to say that sentence. You know, people talk about like the word moist as being like just really unpleasant to the ears. That is the word flesh for me. I just really don't like it. And it comes up a lot in that, like alcohol markers and I guess today in the Peerless. 
I'm having some control issues. I'm sure after that caveat I gave about not being a fan of water brushes for my illustration, that's not really a surprise to anybody. Got to do some freckles, having a little trouble. And then we're gonna grab Royal Carmine and go ahead and get started on her dress. And Carmine is actually made from these little South American beetles. And that doesn't actually bother me all that much. I know that might be something that bothers you guys. I would not know if this dye base is a synthetic version of that. I do know that most naturally organically derived uh, pigments are really more, uh, they're fugitive and they're very likely to run and you have to set them. And that is where like pigment lake comes from, the term pigment lake. So you might see uh, carmine lake carmine pigment like that kind of thing so i this is royal carmine so i don't know if it's just like a reference to the color carmine or if it is actually derived from those beetles or not still having control issues but that is me with the water brush not really the peerless watercolors now, I can't tell you whether or not Peerless is popular with comic artists or illustrators or not. I just don't know. I do know that there was a brief moment in the sun for Peerless with stampers, crafters, those sort of people. And I can both see why and not understand it. Um, Peerless has very bright saturated colors but I find that they're hard to work with and they would take up for me as much space as a watercolor palette. Mm, I also haven't tried mixing colors yet I don't know how successful that is. I always have difficulty mixing colors when I'm mixing dye based watercolors though so that could be a consideration. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the skin tone and we're gonna let Carmine dry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and paint another layer on top of it using the same color. We'll see if we can get any color depth. I know I worked really saturated and I'm getting these little bits of stuff. I think that's the paper these are on. I thought they, I thought these dyes were applied to like an acetate film and then allowed to dry, but it seems that they're applied to a heavy paper. And if you scrub too much on that heavy paper, they'll start to tear up the paper. So that is definite. And then the paper gets into your paint. And that is definitely not something I'm into. And if you're working very saturated, you're gonna use that square. Well, um, I cut an inch by inch square and that's gonna go fast, even with like a little illustration like this. And I did think they were gonna be mm, more saturated and also uh, like last a lot longer than they do. I'm also just not one of those people who's really excited about dye-based watercolors. I just would prefer um, something that's gonna stay on the paper a little bit better when I apply layers. And I find that dye-based watercolors are very fugitive and they lift very easily and I have a lot of trouble controlling and mixing them. So in general, I, te I tend to avoid dye-based watercolors. I think because I probably overwork my illustrations a bit. But I don't know. The thing is, I don't necessarily know any other watercolorists or watercolor comic artists or watercolor illustrators who use Peerless 
regularly. So that I cannot speak to. I do know they have a Jane Davenport palette, but it seems like everybody's got a Jane Davenport palette right now because Daniel Smith's got one and uh, American Crafts has one and Peerless has one. And maybe that's why Peerless became really popular. Uh, maybe she helped popularize that in the crafting world. It will also get sucked up back into the barrel of your pen. Now I will grab some sepia brown and do another layer on her hair and eyes. To me, some of the colors we're getting today are just really reminiscent of inexpensive alcohol markers. Now that could be, that could be how I'm using them. I may be mishandling them, but I just am really not excited by this use case for these. Now, they were very popular for tinting photographs. In fact, I think they had a, a special partnership with Kodak. So, you know, that's why I say this use case. This is certainly not indicative of everyone or even the majority of experiences. So as always, please take my reviews with a bit of a grain of salt. And you can see bits of the paper these were sold on in her dress. Well, at least I can. I'm sorry if y'all can't. All right, let that dry. All right, so we've got a beautiful, I think it's pearl gray. It's the one I didn't label. We've got a beautiful sort of dove gray color that I did way too saturated. Let's try to pick some of this up. Now I'm gonna pick up some of the light green and try to do the embroidery on the sleeves and bodice. And do another layer here on the gray. Try to pull up some depth. And I'm gonna work some wet in the wet gray over here as well. And I'm gonna grab a little more of that geranium pink. And on the lips there. And my, so, so my options, let me zoom out as much as I can. My options for mixing a shadow tone for the skin are wisteria violet which will pop on over there and then some royal carmine and then we'll see how this goes i i am a frightened but i could be wrong i have had a lot of problems with this sort of layering especially for dye based products in the past so i'm going to try keep a really light hand that will help but I may end up just making it worse because the sort of skin tone first of all if you put down too much you can't really blend it out and then even if you're careful with how you mix up your colors it may still be kind of an awkward color on top of your skin tone Whereas with pigment-based watercolors, it might work, or even with alcohol markers, it might work. Okay, I'm gonna try to add some shadow to dark carmine using wisteria violet, and we'll see how that goes. But even regardless of how it goes, I'm kind of annoyed with these watercolors. And I think it's because they're dye-based. I just don't like dye-based watercolors, I don't think. I think I'm not really the right market for them. I should check out how other artists are using them. And maybe that will help me better put them to good use. 
I have a feeling if people do use these, they are going so much lighter than what I'm doing. So I may have to redo this and do another field test. All right, guys. So I think that is about that. I've actually started another illustration where I'm going to try to use these watercolors in a much more light handed fashion. I think a big part of my problem is I am trying to use them too much. So I'm going to try and pick up some bleed proof white using my water brush. Let's see how that goes. I'm just going to add a little bit of white down at the bottoms of her eyes. Helps a lot actually. And on her lips. And just a little more on the bridge of her nose and back in her cheeks. I think that is part of the problem is I just did not leave enough visual white. And these colors are so saturated that they really don't work well as mass tone sort of applications. Now I was thinking I'd be able to get more um, variation out of them. And again, maybe that's just not me not handling them very appropriately. User error, as they say. So I'm actually, this is gonna be a two part field test because I am going to come back with that other piece and see if I can't learn a thing or two. But if you want to do illustration more like this, then really peerless watercolors are probably not for you. You're probably gonna find them frustrating. At least I found them frustrating. Difficult to manage. Uh, some of my other complaints were that I had issues with saturation, rewetting and lifting, uh, poor layering ability, in fact, my phone has had such a problem with the saturation on her face that it doesn't, it's, it has not been able to take photos that accurate, accurately represent how oversaturated I have made her cheeks. They look a little bit better now, but they were really oversaturated earlier. So that is Peerless Watercolor Part 1. I hope you guys, I don't know if I'm going to make these into separate videos. I do feel like that's probably for the best in terms of um, attention spans. So I hope you guys will keep an eye out for my second review of Peerless Watercolors where I handle them a little bit lighter and a little more delicately. Um, I found them difficult to work with and I am sure the error is partially mine since I was trying to force them to behave the way I would other types of watercolor. So I hope this video was helpful, useful, and informative to you guys. If so, please let me know in the comments below. And if there's ever anything you want to see demonstrated or if you'd like a tutorial for anything, let me know that as well. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys have to say and in trying to create content that you guys will enjoy. And if you think this character is cute, you should check out my free to read watercolor webcomic, 7 Inch Kara, at 7inchkara.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, guys.